Wow, that was like it was a complete waste of money, time, and my two hours. Welcome to the horror show! To realize there is nowhere to run! Don't know, take to fright! There are noise, can you lie? The Omen. The 2006 remake. From director John Moore, who also directed A Good Day to Die Hard, uh, comes a remake that not only came out 30 years after the original, but it also has a significant release date. The plot. It's the same as The Omen. The exact shame. On June 6th. 2006. A writer dished out a simple and easy script that they eventually found it to be so identical that they gave David Seltzer writing credit. Ouch. There is a scene added in here where the nanny runs out after the car, which was in the book, but not in the original movie. So either David Seltzer dabbed his knowledge of his book into the movie, or the original writer wasn't as unoriginal as we thought with the cameo by Harvey Stevens, the original Damien. And that crazy nanny added climax change. This movie doesn't feel like it spits in the face of the original. It's a well-shot movie with some great cinematography. It really feels like mid-2000s all over again while watching. What with the outdated technology and so much to an extent the attire. The Ev Schreiber from Scream 2 and 3 is a good actor. I think he was miscast in this movie, though. He is certainly no Gregory Peck who commanded the role of the original Robert Thorne. Julia Stiles is the better actress, but she too seems like she's phoning it in at some parts of the movie. Lee Remick was a solid actress who played Catherine Thorne to a greater caliber than Julia Stiles could ever have pulled off. Pete Postlethwaite from The Lost World of Jurassic Park plays a decent father Brennan, and he is a good actor. However, there was something off about Patrick Troughton's performance that really sold his character. Giovanni Lombardo Radis from Cannibal Ferox, City of the Living Dead, Stage Fright, and The Church plays the small role of Father Spolito, and it's a very minor character in both versions that was decently pulled off in both versions. Michael Gambon from Sleepy Hollow and Harry Potter from 3 on, he was Dumbledore, plays the hell out of Buchenhagen. It is definitely a highlight. I wished that in the scene where Robert and Jennings, David Thewlis met up with Buchenhagen was extended. In the book, Buchenhagen doesn't trust Jennings and therefore tells him to bug off. Buggenhagen. He comes across a room or a hallway filled with skeletons and freaks out and then goes back. It was an effective scene that wasn't in either version. Speaking of Jennings, Thuis plays him decently. Not the level of Gabin's Buggenhagen, but quirky enough to be hipster Jennings. There's also a scene in the book where Jennings chills out and tries to get laid by a local woman in the book that wasn't in either movie. I feel that's for the best because Jennings was always on edge from the beginning of his investigation. There was a lot of care put into making this movie. However, pre-production was rushed, as was post too probably. The gore, the effects. The original had very little blood. So what did they do here? Blood is literally splattering everywhere. There are two alternate scenes with the impaling and decapitating deaths. I feel the impaling alternate scene was too over the top, while the decapitating alternate scene was a great homage to the original. The original decapitation had several different shots surrounding the brutal scene. In the new unaltered movie, it's a quick slice. The, alter the alternate version has the several different angles and is more gruesome. The effect was done so that when the head gets lopped off and people look away, they would look back and it would still be happening. Just from a different angle. Classic. Not so much in here. The musical score, it's great. Not as iconic as the first, but it could have been rushed and worse. It could have been a standard score that was uninteresting. It was almost that, but it redeemed itself during the end credits with the original Omen theme, just an altered version. In about every way, this is a terrible waste of time. It's unoriginal, bland, over the top when need not be, and filled with some absolutely poor jump scares. Like Omen 4, The Awakening, however, I still found some positives with it. It is not the worst remake, which I originally thought it to be, but it could have been oh so much better. Overall, I give The Omen, the 2006 remake, a 1.5 out of 5. 
Lion Brian Gatto, host of Horror Show Entertainment. Make sure to like my Facebook page in the description below and to leave comments and subscribe.